Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can make tools give players special abilities, such as a speed boost or a jump boost, whenever they equip the tool. And then whenever they put away that tool, it's going to go back to normal. So let's go ahead and take a look and see how this is going to work. So I'm going to have my player go and collect this tool here. When they have it equipped, it's going to give them a speed boost. And then when they unequip that tool, it's going to go back to the normal walk speed. Alright, so let's go ahead and dive in and see how we can do this in Roblox Studio. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a script to whatever tool you want to use. So in my case, it's this one right here. I'm going to click on the plus sign and then add a script. The first thing I'm going to do is make a variable for the tool. So I'll say local tool. And this is going to be equal to script dot parent. After that, we're going to be making two different functions. One of those functions is going to run when the tool gets equipped. And the other one is going to run when the tool gets unequipped. So let's go ahead and start with the first one. We're going to say tool dot equipped colon connect. And I'm just going to go ahead and define the function right here. So I'll say function. Inside the function, I need to create a variable for the player. So I'll say local player, and it's going to be equal to game dot players, and I'm going to say colon find first child. Inside the parentheses, I'm going to say tool dot parent dot name. So when the player is holding the tool, it's going to be located in the player's model in the workspace. So by saying tool dot parent, I'm going to get the player's model, and then from that, I'm going to get the name. After that, we're going to take that name and search under game.players to see if that player exists. Then we're going to say if player. Then what we're going to do is we're going to say player dot character dot humanoid dot walk speed. And we're going to set this equal to whatever value you want for the walk speed. The default is 16. So anything larger than 16 will make the player faster. Anything smaller than 16 will make the player slower. So I'm going to start off by using 50. And rather than define it right here, what I'm going to do to make it a little bit easier is make a variable to store that value. So I'll say local speed. And then here is where I'm going to set it equal to 50. And then what I'll do for this part is say it's equal to speed. The reason you might want to do this is it makes it easier to update in the future. So if you want to change the speed later on, all you have to do is update this one variable here and it will change it automatically here. So while we're just using this variable in one spot, this may not be super useful, but this is a good practice when you get into larger scripts. It's always good to define variables instead of hard coding numbers. So before we move on to the unequip function, let's go ahead and just test it and make sure this part is working. So I'm going to go ahead and equip the tool and see if the player gets a speed boost. All right, so everything looks good so far. So let's go ahead and work on the other function so that when the player puts away the tool, it goes back to normal. So it's going to start off very similar. We're going to say tool dot, and then this time it's going to be unequip, colon connect. We'll go ahead and define the function right here. We're still going to get a player variable, but it's going to be set up a little bit differently. We're going to say local player. And this is going to be equal to tool dot parent dot parent. The reason we have to do that is because when the tool gets unequipped, it goes to the player's backpack. So tool dot parent will be the player's backpack. And by saying dot parent again, it's going to go up to the player. From here, we're going to say if player. Then what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing. So I'm going to copy this part. And this time we're going to go back to the default speed, which is 16. There's not really much reason to use a variable for this part right here, because this part is not going to change. If it was something that you're going to change, then you might want to. But since this probably won't get changed in the future, I'm just going to leave it at 16. All right, so let's go ahead and run it and check it out. So I'm going to go ahead and equip the tool. And what I'm going to do before I test it is under workspace, I'm going to show you where it goes. So under workspace and the player model. There's the tool right here. And then when I unequip the tool, 
it disappears from the player's model. And where it goes, it goes under the player section. If I look under the player here and inside their backpack, that's where it goes. So that's the reason for the tool.parent.parent. .parent. So tool.parent will go up to the backpack level. And then dot parent again will go up to the player level. So now let's go and equip it and we'll test it out. So I have the speed boost and when I unequip, it goes back to normal. This can be modified very easily for a jump boost. So all you have to do for that is we'll change this speed to a jump. We'll change it right here as well. Instead of walk speed, we're going to adjust its jump power. The default jump power, I believe, is 50. And then for this jump power, we're going to increase it, and let's make it 250. And one more change, we'll have to change this one from walk speed to jump power as well. Okay, so this is pretty easy to go from speed or to jump. All you have to do is change the variable and then update the property that you want to change. All right, so let's go ahead and test it out. So now when my player equips the tool, rather than getting a speed boost, they get a jump boost. And then when I unequip the tool and try to jump, it goes back to the normal jump. All right, so that's going to be the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed, and stay tuned for the next one.